Kate Northrup and I am here with Manisha Takor and we're in Santa Fe and it's first thing in the morning. Neither of us are morning people. No. So <laughs> we've got Move our the coffee. coffee and we're snuggled up here on the couch. It's prior to 9 a.m. I think this is the earliest glimpse I've done. I would toast you because I don't have the energy to do it yet. <laughs> Um, so Mike and I rolled in here on the Freedom Tour to Santa Fe last night and we just had the most amazing time dinner and talking women and money and all of this stuff. So Manisha is a personal finance expert for women and talk about a little bit about what your specialty is in that arena and what you love telling women or teaching women. Sure. So I really focus on the basics of personal finance. I had spent 15 years in the corporate world after graduating from Harvard Business School. I worked in financial services as an analyst and a portfolio manager. And what I discovered, Kate, is there are all these multi-syllabic words that are thrown around in financial services and people are made to feel like it's incredibly complex yeah. when the basics boil down to save, invest, and protect. And so I really see myself as someone who can help women perhaps take some of that complexity that comes out of the industry and translate it into simple, powerful acts in their everyday life. That's great. And what I love about your approach is that you're really, um, you're, you're pretty warm and fuzzy for, I mean, you know, I, I thought you were like, what the hog? So friendly and you make it very approachable. And that's something that's so needed, especially because the, the typical mindset for women, I think, is still, you know, even though it's 2011, almost 2012, it's still, oh, this is boring, it's too complicated for me, and a man would be better at it. Well, and I tell you, Kate, I really think that we're going through something fascinating in this economy. So we're having a cyclical recession, mm -hmm. but I think we're also having a secular recession in the sense that you know, every 80 to 100 years, the economies just shift and mm -hmm. change. And I think this one is ushering in an era where women are going to play a whole new role. Yeah. And there are a couple of data points that lead me to say this. The first was when we started to hear people talk about the she economy mm -hmm. and the he session, when in the <laughs> early days of the recession, the industries that were hardest hit were the ones that were male dominated finance, manufacturing, and construction. Mm -hmm. So they lost their jobs, we kept ours. Mm -hmm. Then I started to hear more and more about the global power of women in the sense that several big cell side research houses were putting out reports saying if you look at the expected incremental growth in the income of women globally and you compare it to the expected incremental GDP growth of India or China, we women, we're like a hot emerging market. Wow. Um, and we are a hot emerging market. It's true. <laughs> and then the final piece coming back to the warm and fuzzy, Kate, is that um, you, as I started to hear people questioning what would have happened if it were Lehman sisters mm -hmm. instead of Lehman brothers, and I realized that there was a, a level of masculine energy running through the financial services world that people were starting to now question. And now I think people are opening the door for feminine energy, yeah. which can come from women and men. Exactly. Yeah, that's so great. And so following up on that, one of the things we talked about last night is that you are moving from only teaching and talking from the left brain around finances to moving into a little bit more about the right brain. Yeah. So you can talk about a little bit more about what that means. Sure, so um, for years I hid, um, and hid being the operative word, in my left brain, which was this incredibly safe place to be, because as we talk, Kate, you get applauded yes, um, exactly. by society for living there. And what I realized is I've been traveling around the country giving the same 20 core answers to the same core 20 financial questions, and I feel like I've tapped out my ability to help. I'm realizing mm -hmm. people aren't hearing. And I realized for so many women, the reason they, they're not hearing is that I'm not using half my brain. Right. And so I <laughs> launched a new blog called Money Zen. Is it moneyzen.com? Um, moneyzen.com. Okay, great. And I'm on what I'm calling a quest to find financial peace of mind. I want to marry the left brain and the right brain, the physical, mm -hmm. and, and introduce the metaphysical because what I'm realizing is the right information is out there for us to dominate our dollars, but we're not doing it. So the right. answer can't be just information alone. Totally. It never really is. I mean, we all, even when it comes to food, um, so many people talk about the, the connection between the way we deal with food yes. and the way we deal with money. The Janine Ross, Ross. Yeah. fabulous. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we all know what we're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. with food, and yet sometimes it just doesn't happen because it's emotional. It is so true. When I, 
One of the exercises I love to do, Kate, is to ask people to free associate with the phrase, money is the root of all, and you can use any word but evil. Oh, okay. And it's fascinating. People fall into two camps. It's either freedom, like you, and empowerment, and choices, or it's stress, mm -hmm. fights, anger, and there's such a chasm. People have very strong feelings one way or the other, and it makes sense if that's how you feel about something, that the raw numbers alone aren't going to help you change your actions. Absolutely not. No. And um, circling back to, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little morning frog in my throat. That's what we get for, for trying to work so early in the morning. <laughs> oh, I work so hard, you have no idea. No. <laughs> Um, so, how, how do you, one of the things you say on your website is that you specialize in helping women talk to their guys about money. And then also, second part of that question, how do men deal with this changing situation? It is so hard. And so for any guys out there or women who are married to guys that are struggling right now with this subject, we're at the sea change where historically um, men were the primary or breadwinners and during this recession we hit a, a point where statistically a higher percentage of women were primary or co-breadwinners in their households than any point in life. Mm -hmm. Job stability is something of the past. We all work for ourselves um, whether we work for a corporation right. or self-employed and so really um, I think the answer is to talk about the pink elephant in the room. I like to say get financially naked. <laughs> and when you think about it, when you get in a relationship, you talk about whether you want to have kids, you talk about sexual preferences, you talk about religious issues, but we don't really talk about our money. No. And so it's just investing in your relationship, that's the key, and talking about um, um, uh, money and, and um, really committing to bearing yourself as a way to get closer, not to judge each other. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I found in my relationship that's been tremendously helpful. Um, just like peeling back the layers on everything, but money conversations particularly, and yeah, it's really it's really interesting how and how scary it is to do that. It's not easy necessarily. No, and I, did you find a sense of relief when you were done? Totally. Oh my yeah. god, huge. Yeah, yeah, huge. So, what is this? You're the first person I'm asking this question, but this is a new question for Glimpse TV. <laughs> Ooh, uh oh. Um, so, when do you feel the most free? I feel the most free when I am sitting in a coffee house and there's jazz playing in the background and I'm reading something that I feel really connected to. Mm -hmm. um, and in that moment, I think what I what's making me feel free is that I feel connected to my core mm -hmm. and I have enough right there in that space. I just feel full, full of joy. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. Cool. And what are you doing in your life that you're scared of, but you're doing anyway? Money Zen. Um, <laughs> I, I'm so terrified to step away from the left brain and the numbers and open up to this whole new side. I, I have this theory that our relationship with finance is like a tree. And the leaves are the tactical financial steps that we okay. take. The branches are our emotions. The trunk is our familial programming and societal influences. And the roots are spiritual underpinnings. Mm -hmm. And in the financial services industry, well over 90% of our time is spent on the leaves. Mm -hmm. And in my own life, well over 90% of the time has been spent on the leaves. And I realize <laughs> there's some issues <laughs> in the branches and the trunk. And yeah. my roots are kind of like spiritual stubs. So working on that is scaring me. If you ever are scared and want to call me, I will talk to you about the roots till the cows come home. I'm taking you up on that. Kate. I love to hang out in the roots. That's like the, the roots in the trunk, pretty much. But um, and to get for the perfect tree, I can get some tips on the leaves <laughs> later. <as well. laughs> and then lastly, what do you love about your life? Oh gosh, that is a great question. Um, I love. I love my husband, I love my parents, I love my brother and my sister-in-law, and I just love being here. And that may sound odd, but for so, I'm 41 years old, and for so much of my life, I didn't feel my life. Mm -hmm. um, I was constantly working these 70, 80 hour weeks on planes all over the place. I didn't feel like a human. So what I love most is feeling alive. So good. Thank you for coming on my show. Oh, Kate, thank you so much for having me. Have a beautiful me. day. <laughs>